All right, so this board is not charging a battery. If I plug in a charger cable, there's no light. So in order to get a green light in the charger, this is the circuit that's got to start working. This circuit is going to allow the adapter sense line of the charger to talk to the SMC via the Sys1 wire line. So this chip over here is the system management controller. And this needs to talk to the SMC in order for the charger to turn on. This is about a three volt data line. The charger has the three volt data line and the 18 volt power line. What a lot of people will do while they're drunk is they'll do something where they're trying to plug it in and they'll be like, like blah, blah, blah. and then it'll wind up shorting the 18 volt charger line to the three volt data line. So the reason that we've got this chip over here is this chip is going to keep the 18 volts from going to the SMC and frying the SMC. For this chip to work, it has to be getting power on its VCC pin from this chip. And for this chip to work, it needs to be being powered on with PP3V42, and it needs to be getting SMC BCAC OK. This logic gate will allow 3.42 volts to go through if SMC BCAC OK is present. So the first power rail that we need before anything will turn on here is PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. And that power rail is created conveniently down here by U6990. So let's just take a look and see what that looks like. You'll see that it looks like a complete disgusting wreck. First thing I'm going to do is look at the stuff that's corroded and try to match up what it is. Now this capacitor over here, C6990, is this one. And you can see that the edge on it is really nasty. The reason that I can tell is instead of having two silver edges, like the nice components, it has a silver edge, and this edge is kind of all brown, gray, blacked out, and it's, it's kind of junky. So C6990 is one of the capacitors on the input line. So this is where the 18 volts from the charger or the 12.6 volts from the battery is going to enter the input of U6990, which is going to take 18 volts from the charger and turn it into 3.42 volts, or it's going to take the 12.6 volts from the battery, ignore the Apple typo here of 18.5 volts, one of their authorized technicians typed that in wrong. It's going to take that 12.6 volts from the battery and turn it into 3.42 volts. If this capacitor is short circuited to ground, that means that this input line is not going to work and my charger is not going to turn on to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if that's the case. So we're going to see what the resistance is to ground over here. So put the black probe on ground and this probe over here. And as you can see, we have 1.4 ohms to ground, which means there is a short to ground on the input of the PP3V42 line. I'm going to take a wild guess that this capacitor is one of the offenders. And you can see that it chips off very easily. You can see what the inside of it looks like. It's pretty cool stuff. Never see the inside of a capacitor before. Gross. My tweezers are kind of nasty and broken looking. So I'm going to remove that stuff at the hot air station. We're just going to jump all that, get rid of all that junk on the board. I'm going to cover this keyboard backlight connector over here because that keyboard backlight connector is going to get burned if I don't cover it with something. Now, even though that chip may actually be good, I'm not going to trust that it is. We're going to take that off. And we're going to take this little capacitor off as well. This pad over here looks completely gone. Done for. So I'm going to scrape it a little and see if there's anything under there that I can solder to. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. I've also got to get myself a new chip. This board uses an LT3470 AED. Store.rossmangroup.com has chips for all MacBook products, and they're arranged by the board model number, by the model of your machine. You can even just search up here, U6990, and it'll give you a list of chips that are U6990. Or you can check out by the model number of the chip. It'll give you a detailed description of what these things are for. Don't delay, buy today. Yep, we're just going to clean that area up a little bit before putting replacement part here. We've got our pads redone. Going to add some solder to those new pads. It's going to be a beautiful board. Check that out. That area that was all rusted away is now a nice little solder pad.
And the reason I'm moving back and forth is because if there's any corrosion or any kind of junk left on the pads, I want it all to get stuck on my iron rather than to stay on the board. There's a strategy to that. All right, time to get this Mac turned into a PC. Mm-hmm. We're turning this Mac into a PC. According to the lobbyist that spoke to the assembly person that I spoke to in 2015. Beautiful. All right, we had a little solder ball jump out there. Just makes, we ran out of flux there, which is why those joints look the way they do. Flux makes everything better. My connector right next door actually came out pretty good. Covering the connector with a small metal shield that came out of an iPhone was a good idea. So we plug in the charger, and it looks like we've still got nothing. So we're gonna go back to the scene of the crime. So where we're supposed to be getting 18 volts, we're getting 0.5. Ah, yes, because if there was a short circuit over here, these two resistors that act as fuses would have blown. In R7020 and R7005, these two act as fuses on the input of the circuit. So R6920 and R6905 are here. This acts as a fuse between the charger and the input of the PP3V42 circuit and the battery in the input of the PP3V42 circuit. And since C6990 was short-circuited to ground, C6990 would have sent all the electricity from the charger to ground, which would have blown this resistor that's acting as a fuse on the input line. And you can see that R6920 is here, R6905 is here. If I just go straight into microscope only view, I don't need the multimeter to show you that these two look absolutely destroyed. That's this and this. So we're gonna pop those off, and after we pop those off, it should work. Okay, I don't wanna melt the charging connector, which is right above it. So to be careful here, I'm gonna put uh, my shield again. All right, so that goes. And this actually broke in half. Wow, that was really damaged. Okay, we're gonna give the board a second to cool off, and after that, plug it in. And it'll probably work beautifully. Plug it in, plug it in. What are you, the state attorney general? <laughs> Why don't you... Check that out. And... That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That is a working board. And that is how we fix the 820-3462 when it's not charging. 99% of the time, your corrosion is going to be in the same spot right down there. If you need help with any other type of board repair, make sure to check out rossmangroup.com slash boards. We've got parts. We've got tools. We've got support. We've got engineers that will help you with your problem. And if you have absolutely no money and need support, just search the forum for free. You can search through and find answers to all your problems 